Hey guys, how's it going? In this video we're going to go over three worked examples to remind you of how to do questions involving resultant vectors. Specifically, we're going to look at the scale diagram method and the calculation method. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, and that way you'll be able to apply what you learned in that video to this one. Let's get started. Question 1 says that a girl walks 40 metres north in 10 seconds, then turns east and walks another 30 metres in 5 seconds. Find the distance travelled in part A and B the displacement, magnitude and direction. So remember, to find the distance travelled, it's quite simple. All we need to do is look at our two distances in the question, 40 metres and 30 metres, and add them together. So our total distance is 40 plus 30, which is 70 metres. For the displacement in part B, this is where we need to do a bit more work. So I'm going to choose to do the calculation method for this one. One, but you could also do this using the scale diagram method if you prefer. So for the calculation method, remember it helps to start off with a little sketch. So drawing my first vector, I'm going to label that, that's A equals 40 metres. My second vector is to the east and it's 30 metres, so I'll say B equals 30 metres and then we can draw our resultant vector. Now notice that this is already nose to tail, so we don't need to add it nose to tail, it's already done for us. So drawing our resultant vector now from the start to the finish point, the shortest distance from the start to the finish point, we have this, and we can then put in our two arrows to show that that is the resultant vector and not just a single vector, and I'll label that C. So I'll put C equals question mark, because that's the magnitude that we're trying to find. So to find our magnitude, first of all, we can use Pythagoras. So we've got C squared equals A squared plus B squared, which is equal to 40 squared plus the 30 squared, which equals 2,500, once you put that into your calculator. But it's not just C squared that we're after, it's C that we want, so we need to square root 2,500, which gives us an answer of 50 metres. To find the direction now, we need to consider our angles in the triangle. So we can label our right angle over here, and we can then label our angle theta as this one over here. Now the reason I've chosen this angle here and not this one over here is because we always choose the angle theta to be the one next to the starting point. So here is my starting point and here is my angle theta. Now you might use x instead of theta to mean the angle and that's absolutely fine, but for here we're using theta. So for the direction, we're going to use tan theta equals opposite over adjacent and then substituting in the numbers, we've got opposite of that angle theta is 30 and adjacent to the angle theta is 40, so it's 30 over 40, which is equal to 0 0.75. So now we need to find what theta is, so we need to do shift tan of that answer, and if you put that into your calculator, you get an answer of 37 degrees. Now we're not finished because we need to state that direction using either compass points or bearings. So writing down our final statement, we've got resultant displacement is equal to 50 meters from our magnitude at 37 degrees east of north. And the way we find that is because my angle there is 37 degrees, there's my north, my east would be over here, so I've gone 37 degrees east of north. Or you could state it as 50 meters at a bearing of 037, because remember we define bearings from 000 and we go round in a clockwise direction to the resultant vector. So going from here round to here is a bearing of 037. So remember you can choose as to whether you use compass points here or bearings here as your direction. So you don't have to write down both of these, just one of them as your final answer. Part C says to find the average speed. So we need to use our classic speed distance time here. So writing down what we know, we're trying to find average speed, v bar equals question mark. We know that the distance is 70 metres from part A, and our time in the question is 15 seconds. Now we can write down our equation, so we've got d equals v bar t. Rearranging for the average speed, we get d over t, and substituting in the numbers gives us 70 divided by 15, which, when you put that into your calculator, you get an answer of 4.7 metres per second. Part D, the average velocity, so this time we're not going to use D equals V bar T, but we're going to need to use the displacement form of that, S equals V bar T, instead. So writing down what we know from the question, V bar equals question mark, that's average velocity this time. Our displacement is 50 metres with a direction, but we can ignore the direction for now and put it in at the end. And our time as well is 15 seconds, just like in part C. So writing down our equation, we have S equals V bar T, and rearranging for V bar, we have V bar equals S over T, Substituting in the numbers gives us 50 over 15, which when you put into your calculator gives a final answer of 3.3 meters per second at 37 degrees east of north or 3.3 meters per second at 037. Now remember these were just our directions from part B that we already worked out, so we've not done any other work here to get the directions, we already knew them. So you can state your final answer as this one here or as this one here. Question 2 says that a boat engine drives a boat at 6 kilometers per hour on a bearing of 120. A strong wind of speed 10 kilometers per hour blows the boat on a bearing of 170. 
find the resultant velocity of the boat by scale diagram. Now if you're trying this yourself you need to get a piece of paper and a pen or pencil and you're going to need pretty much a full size of A4 paper to do this. Now the question is specifically asking us to use the scale diagram so we can't use any calculation method here and as well as paper and a pen or pencil you'll also need a ruler and a protractor to do this properly. So remember our first step for the scale diagram method is to choose a scale. Now because we've got speeds of 6 kilometers per hour and 10 kilometers per hour we need to represent these as vectors on our paper on our page. So we need to choose an appropriate scale to do that. So the easiest one would probably be to make one centimeter equal to one kilometer per hour. And that means that we're going to have a six centimeter line on our page as well as a 10 centimeter line on our page. So now that I've got the scale, I'm going to put a dot on my page and this is going to represent my boat. So instead of drawing a big boat, this is going to make things look a bit nicer to just have a dot. So this dot is representing the boat. Now what we need to do is because we've got strange bearings of 120 and 170, we need to know where these bearings are in relation to this boat in order to draw our first two vectors. So drawing our compass compass points first of all, we've got north, east, south and west, then you're going to use your protractor to mark out 120 degrees round from 000. So marking on from 000 round to 120 with your protractor, placing it over here, then it's going to look like this and you're going to put a dot at this point here. So that is 120 degrees round to there. Then you can draw your vector from the middle of the boat out along through that point, like this. And the length of that vector is going to be 6 centimetres, to represent our 6 kilometres per hour. We're now ready to do our second vector. Now the second vector is going to be a length of 10 centimetres on a bearing of 170. So we're going to do the same again, place your protractor along here, you're going to measure from 0 round to 170 and put a mark on that point, so it would end up about here just before 180, and you're going to then draw your vector through there. And that's going to be a length of 10 centimetres centimeters to represent your 10 kilometers per hour. Now the next thing we need to do is add our vectors nose to tail because right now they're not nose to tail. So the easiest way to probably do this to save space on your paper is to project this 6 centimeter line back the way so we could draw it over here instead like this. Okay, so that's my 6 centimeter line and we can now ignore this one from now on because we're now dealing with the nose to tail vectors that we're adding together. So this 6 centimeters and this 10 centimeters. So now we can draw a resultant vector which is the shortest distance from the start to the finish which would look like this and I'm going to put my two arrows on there to represent the resultant and make it different to the single vectors. Now what we can do is take our ruler and measure the distance from the start to the finish point along that resultant vector. And if you do that, you should get an answer roughly around 14.7 centimetres. Now don't worry if you've got about 14.8 or 14.6, somewhere around that should be about right. And 14.7 is just what I got when I did it on paper. So that means we can write down our magnitude as 14.7 centimetres is equal to 14.7 kilometres per hour using our scale. So we've now got the magnitude of our velocity to be 14.7 kilometres per hour. We now need to find the direction, so to do that we're going to measure a bearing from north which is 000. So we're going to go over here to the starting point of our nose to tail vectors. So over here is going to be where we put our compass points and we can then measure the angle from north at 000 round in a clockwise direction to the resultant vector. And if you measure that with your protractor, placing it along here, you should get an angle there of 152 degrees and that is your bearing. So writing down our final answer, our final statement, we have that the resultant velocity is equal to 14.6 seven kilometers per hour at 152, that's our bearing there. Question three says that a car travels east for one hour at a speed of 60 kilometers per hour. The driver turns south and travels for another hour at a speed of 40 kilometers per hour. Part A says what is the total distance traveled by the car? So remember total distance is found simply by just adding together the two distances. But there's a bit of a difficulty here because in the question we're given velocity values rather than distances. So we're actually going to have to do a couple of speed distance time calculations first to find our distances travelled east and south. So we need to use the speed values given to find the distances travelled east and south. So starting with the east direction first, we're trying to find distance. Note the speed is 60 kilometres in the east direction and our time is equal to one hour. So we're going to look for a distance in kilometers because we're using kilometers per hour and hours so it's going to make it easy for us. So writing down our equation we have that d equals vt and substituting in our numbers we get 60 times 1 which is nice and easy gives us an answer of 60 kilometers. And now doing the same for the south direction we have that d equals a question mark 
we have that the speed is 40 kilometers per hour and our time again is one hour. So nice and easy again, writing down our equation, d equals vt equals 40 times one, which is simply gonna give us 40 kilometers. Now that we have two distances, we can use these to find our total distance for part A. So doing that, we have the total distance is 60 plus 40, which gives us a total of 100 kilometers. Part B says to calculate the average speed. Now to do this, we need to write down what we know. So we're trying to find the average speed. We know that the distance now is 100 kilometers and our time is two hours for the journey because it was one hour in the east direction and one hour in the south direction. So the total is two hours for the time. And writing down our equation, we have d equals v bar t. Rearranging for v bar, the average speed, we get d over t. And substituting in the numbers gives us 100 over 2, which gives a final answer of 50 kilometers per hour. Again, just keeping things in kilometers and hours to get an answer of kilometers per hour. Part C says, what is the car's displacement from its starting point? Now to do this, you can use either the calculation method or the scale diagram method. I'm going to use the calculation method because I think it's a bit quicker and a bit more accurate. So I've got my vector in the east direction first, and I'm going to call that A equals 60 kilometers. And now my vector in the south direction, that's going to be 40 kilometers, and I'll label that that B. Now we can draw our resultant vector going from the start to the finish point, so the shortest distance there, which is here, and putting the two arrows on to show the resultant vector. We can then call that C, and we're trying to find the magnitude of C using Pythagoras. So to find the magnitude, we do C squared equals A squared plus B squared, which when putting in those numbers, 60 squared plus 40 squared gives us an answer of 5,200. But remember, we want C, not just C squared, so we need to square root that answer to get 72 kilometers. Next, to find the direction, we want to label our angles in the triangle. So we've got our right angle in here, first of all. And then remember, we choose the angle that is next to the starting point. So there's my starting point there and that's my angle theta. Remember, you can use x in here if you want to. So using Sokotoa for tan theta, we have tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. So there's opposite my angle there, the 40 kilometers, divided by adjacent to the angle, which is 60. So I have 40 over 60, which gives two thirds or 0.67. We then need to do shift tan or inverse tan of that in your calculator. And doing that, you should get an angle of 34 degrees. Remember, we're not quite finished yet because we need to state the direction with either compass points or bearings. So our resultant vector is equal to 7 22 kilometers at 34 degrees south of east. And the way I found that is because our angle here is 34 degrees. There's my east direction. This would be south of east. And so this vector must be at 34 degrees south of east. Or we could state it as 72 kilometers at a bearing of 124. Now the way we get 124 is remember we could start off at 000 up here, move round in the clockwise direction until we get to the resultant vector. So if I start off here, that's going to give an angle of 90 plus whatever my angle was that we worked out, 34. So 90 plus 34 gives a bearing of 124, 124. So lastly, part D says, what is the average velocity? Now writing down what we know, we have average velocity equals question mark. Our displacement from part C there was 72 kilometers with a direction, but we'll ignore the direction for now and put it in at the end. Our time was two hours, just like in part B. Writing down our equation, we have S equals V bar T. And rearranging for V bar this time, we get S over T, which gives us 72 divided by two, which gives a final answer of 36 kilometers per hour at 34 degrees south of east, or at 36 kilometers per hour at 124. So stating our directions there, which we worked out in part C. We've not done any more work to find the directions. That's all from me, folks. I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it one of these, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.